Good morning, this is DCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. And time now for the Mayor's Report. And on this Saturday morning, we're talking with Mayor Beamish. I am back amongst the living, and it's great. April showers bring May flowers, let's hope. Well, Uh, we've had enough shower. Well, we've had enough shower and enough snow for April now. Boy, it had, you know, this whole uh, winter, spring season so far has been a roller coaster. Yeah, We've had warm temperatures. We've had snowfall that you see in the morning. By the afternoon, it's disappeared. That, to me, that is the craziest. It's it's been a, a really like I say a roller coaster ride from being uh, cold enough to snow to then uh, into the fifties this week, I, I, close to know, sixty. Right. So so maybe we'll get those May flowers uh, because we've certainly had enough uh, uh, precipitation. Let's call it that. Yeah, I'd much rather hear the thunder than see the snow. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Now we did have council this week, Mayor. We sure did. Uh, this past Monday, uh, we did have council on. April 2nd. Um, Prior to council, we had a unique meeting. We had three uh, subcommittee meetings of council, and uh, the Safety and Health Committee met, and they were looking at the hazard mitigation plan that needs to be renewed every five years. Just a simple thing is if you uh, have an incident uh, of any kind of variety and you need, uh, like FEMA, uh, coverage of that, you have to have a plan in place. Miami County does have that plan. All the jurisdictions in Miami County participate, but it has to be renewed and looked at every five years. So a subcommittee of council will present that at another council meeting, but they reviewed that as well. The Streets and Sidewalk Committee met uh, prior to council on the paving program, 2018 paving program. You know, we're fixing potholes all over. This is beyond that. This is actual doing street work uh, that needs to be done, and we look at and rate different streets of need and then uh, plan accordingly. So we've uh, we've uh, dedicated over eight hundred thousand uh, dollars for, and that has been an improvement over the recent years to uh, help with street maintenance. So that that was taken place by streets, uh, the streets and sidewalks committee, utilities committee met doing some uh, uh, looking at wastewater treatment plant, uh, UV uh, disinfection program, and and uh, that's been there for a long time and needs to be upgraded and so we talked about that as well as uh, the sanitary uh, sewer project going in there uh, and and keeping the, the storm sewers uh, open. And everything but, everything that you've mentioned is infrastructure. This it's is, infrastructure. It, it's keeping this stuff going and in good shape so yeah. we, we don't fall under the gun. All those issues of the subcommittee and again uh, each subcommittee is divided by council members, uh, three people one being chair, and every one of those issues I shared with you is going to move forward to council for a future council uh, agenda uh, meeting. But we did meet on Monday. We did have a number of items. Uh, we, we've we listened, we've talked. Uh, with the budget uh, included uh, a renovation for the clubhouse at Miami Shores Golf Course. Um, and council voted 9-0 to move forward with that project, hopefully getting that started so um, we can get that done as quick as possible. Uh, we did have a small business development revolving loan application, uh, and that was emergency so they can move forward with that project. That's bringing another business into our town, and uh, that passed uh, a 9-0 as well. Um, we had some BZA amendments, considerations, that's the Board of Zoning Appeals to fit the state uh, criteria, and uh, that just kind of brings us under the same umbrella, and that, that again, passed 9-0. One thing that did go to a second reading is the sections 6 and 7 of Stonebridge Meadows uh, plan development and dedication of right away that they want to council wants to look at that there are some issues out there that are being discussed by the homeowners there and we're listening and council's listening so they want to do a little more uh, homework on that before they make some decisions about section six and seven and for that area so that moved to a second 
reading. And then we closed uh, with uh, general reappropriation. Sometimes you move, you have to move, you have to have the money, but you can move it around uh, to fit the need. And so they had a reappropriation of funds uh, based on an auditor's recommendation, and that again passed uh, 9-0. So we had those issues all coming together in council, and so council uh, continues to move forward, and uh, that was the first meeting of April, and we'll have one more meeting in April as well, and uh, you'll see some of those new items put on the agenda. All right, where it sounds like the weather here in April has come in like a lion, it sounds like council came in like a lamb. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, you know, I, I have to say this about council many times, you know, these are people who choose to run, to be leaders in the city and to uh, move the city forward. Many times they make decisions that are not always popular, but I will tell you about this council. They do their homework and they do due diligence and when they make a decision, they're committed to that decision. It, well, it affects them, too. They right. live in the community. Thank you for saying that. A lot of people, I, I, I don't know, they don't realize that these are people that every decision they make it affects them as well, and the mayor. It affect, and I don't vote, but it affects uh, the mayor as well, and all people, all citizens in our community. And I think the proof's in the pudding. We've done some really uh, fantastic things financially to keep us st stable, but we've also moved the city forward with economic development efforts, and we all know where some of those are, and our downtown is vibrant. And so those are all good things with recreation and culture as quality of life amenities that we're all blessed to have. So well, the one good thing that I'm, I wanted to bring up is uh, looking at what is and, and the possibilities of the Sherwood Shopping Center. We're, we're really looking at that. I know uh, a lot of people wonder uh, why the city hasn't just taken that over. Well, we don't own it. Right. Uh, now, there is some efforts of local ownership, which we're very excited about. But along with that, you're going to have to look at, uh, at that whole center and how we're going to renovate that center and how we're going to bring it alive again. And there are efforts uh, being made every day to try to, uh, first of all, localize that center and then bring it back to life. I think uh, having local owners is going to be the first big step. And, and we uh, have some interest in that, so we're hoping that will move forward. That is great. So more good news there. Yeah. Uh, some more good news. We are in spring, and uh, come springtime, everybody always likes to get in the basement, the garage, maybe the attic, the house and start doing some of that spring cleaning. We have our uh, spring neighborhood cleanup that's coming here in uh, next week in April. Absolutely, on April 9th through the 13th will be our uh, annual spring <coughs> neighborhood cleanup and that allows you to exceed the capacity of your cart. Uh, and uh, you can have additional bagged household items uh, that can be placed out on that collection day. And if you need to have extra uh, space, put them away from the cart. But they'll get picked up on that as something we've been doing for a number of years. And, and uh, it goes along with the dye mill facility and all the other um, opportunities that people have for uh, trash and recycling uh, collections. Absolutely. So that's going to be taking place uh, this uh, coming week. All right. So that's the 9th through the 13th. Absolutely. So set out that extra refuge you may have. With all the rain that we've been getting, I'll mention this. Uh, make sure your gutters, make sure there's nothing blocking the gutters in the street. You have always uh, mentioned that, and, and that's good community uh, service as well. You know, it helps everything, so you don't have that. We have enough water and don't have the backups if we can keep the storm sewers clean and clear. Uh, that That's just good of debris, and uh, we can bag those up if you want to have them picked up, or you can take it out to the dye mill facility or, rather than just let them go down the storm sewer. All right. Mayor, thank you so much, and uh, welcome back. Well, thank you very much. If I can make one more comment, Certainly. you always say, is there anything else you'd like to say? Is so there, I'm going to preempt that. Is there say, anything else you'd like thank to say? You. Well, I want to yeah. share uh, a, a change of the Board of Park Commissioners, very important board in our city 
that uh, monitors and uh, s looks at our park system, and we have a beautiful park system. Uh, one of the members, Levi Fox, uh, needed to resign that position. He's a young man, uh, did a great job on the Board of Park Commissioners, joined uh, uh, Susan Westfall and Al Cappers, uh, but we needed to get a replacement. I'm pleased to announce that another Trojan, a uh, young person, is going to join that Board of Park Commissioners, and that person's name is Jordan Emmerich, and many people know Jordan uh, from his days in high school here, but uh, he's now grown up and he will be sworn in, uh, well has been sworn in this past Tuesday at the uh, joint meeting. We had a joint meeting of the rec board and the park board together since they work in programming and uh, using the parks. So they meet uh, occasionally to get together and share. And Jordan was uh, given the oath of office, so he is now a full-fledged member of the Board of Park Commissioners. So Wonderful. We welcome Jordan. To welcome that, Jordan. That position. All right, Mayor. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Okay. This has been the Mayor's Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJF.